silver bells all seem to say throw cast away You know, if you think about it, ornaments are kind of neat. I know we use them to decorate the tree and make it look pretty and Christmassy, and, but they can be a kind of reminder too, can't they? You know, whenever I look at this ornament from Chase, I'm gonna think about the year that he got me the Orioles jersey and the year that they won 100 games and went to the playoffs. We use ornaments to decorate the tree, but they often serve as reminders of things, don't they? You know, I remember growing up and having some of those kinds of ornaments, one that marked the year, uh, because not because it had a date on it, but because it was the year that, you know, I made that ornament, that special gingerbread ornament for my mom, or that snow globe that we bought at Bush Gardens at that really cool Christmas store, or uh, the one where our dog Enzo ripped off the uh, head of his new toy that he got for Christmas. That was, oh yeah, that was that year. And ornaments remind us of people too, Here's one that my grandmother passed down to me. And every time I think about it, uh, I look at it. I think of the 10X sugar candy that she used to make every year with peanut butter. And it was super sweet. And I'd eat so much of it that I get a headache every time, but it seemed so worth it. You know, I'm married with kids now, and here's one with everyone in our family, even our dog Enzo. And uh, this one, these right here, they remind me of my sons when they were little. And this one right there, that reminds me when I was a younger person too. You know, ornaments are great at bringing to mind some really fun and beautiful and special memories. Uh, like this one, this one right here hanging in the middle of the tree. It reminds me of my mom. And boy, did my mom love Christmas. She loved to bake and to cook. There were no shortage of chocolate chip cookies in our house. She loved to go Christmas shopping at the mall. You know, that was before Amazon. And she loved wrapping presents and she always had a special way of uh, presenting those gifts to us. She had a special wrapping paper for me and my sister every year. And she loved decorating. Our house would get decked out with green carlin and red and green tablecloths and pine scented candles in the window, icicles on the outside and a wreath on the front door. And she, she loved it so much that we had two Christmas trees, a fun one in the den where we put the presents and a fancy one for show in the living room that was good enough for the front cover of any magazine. You know, one of my favorite memories of my mom at Christmas was her was standing beside her as she sat at the piano. As she led us in singing Christmas carols when, when all the family had gathered together. You know, I, I can still see her hands just kind of effortlessly gliding over the keys of the piano with such skill and grace as we sang Silent Night. You know, those are some really really good memories. You know, in so many ways, my mom loved Christmas and this ornament reminds me of that. But when I look at it, it also reminds me that in so many ways, Christmas was a hard time of year for my mom. And to be honest, for, for all of us in my family. I remember the Christmas when I was six years old, when it wasn't Santa in a sleigh that came to visit my house in the middle of the night, but it was a police officer in his patrol car with his lights flashing. My mom and dad weren't getting along and it got bad enough that a neighbor felt like they had to call the police. My aunt and uncle came and picked us up and, and took us uh, to my grandmother's house. And my sister and I, well, we didn't get to open any of our presents that morning because we didn't have a Christmas morning. You know, I didn't get that favorite toy gun until a week or so later. And for reasons that you just might, might guess, I, it didn't really do much for me once I got it either. Sure, I wanted it, but I didn't want all the other stuff I got that Christmas either. My parents got divorced not too long after that. There were no more Christmases with both mom and dad and the ripple effect of brokenness that, that followed it, well, it hung a bit of sadness on every Christmas tree after that. Every Christmas was a reminder, not of something that we had gotten, but of something that was taken away. It was hard on all of us, especially my mom, a heaviness that, that led her toward depression and alcoholism and her leaving our family a whole lot sooner than she should have. Ornaments are great to bring to mind some really fun and beautiful and special memories, but they can also remind us of the hard ones too. 
Have you ever gotten something for Christmas that you didn't really ask for or didn't really want? Something you wish you could return? Now, I'm not talking about that ugly shirt or off-brand toy or inferior phone. I'm talking about the other stuff, the hard thing in your life that you've had to deal with or maybe you're dealing with right now. Maybe you didn't necessarily get it at Christmas, but if you had one Christmas wish, this Christmas, your wish would be to be able to return it. But the reality is that whatever it is, it didn't come with a gift receipt. You know, will this Christmas just be shine a spotlight on that thing that you wish you didn't get? Is there something really bumming you out that you would, you'd only be reminded of more and more because uh, it is Christmas and it's supposed to be a time of great joy, but that thing that's only stealing your joy is just reminding you of all the things that you don't have versus all the things that you may hope that you would get. Did something happen at school? Are you, are you doing poorly in a class? You're not getting along with a teacher or a classmate. Did you get cut from the team while some other kid that you didn't think should make it made the team? And does the lunch table still stink even though you're already halfway through the school year? Did a friend move away? Are you not part of that friend group anymore because of the thing that she said or the thing that he did or the thing that you said or the thing that you did? Are things hard at home? Parents not getting along with each other? Are you not getting along with them or are you not getting along with your siblings? Are you not sure what Christmas will be like this year because your family's struggling with some money? Are you a kid like me whose parents are divorced? Will you have to open presents in two different houses or with just one parent? For whatever reason, will this be your first Christmas without someone who's always been at every Christmas before? And are you physically down? Maybe you're just tired. Maybe you're just not feeling good. Maybe you're sick and maybe you're hurt. Maybe you're stressed out and maybe you're just sad and you're just not sure why. You know, ornaments do more than decorate our tree. In some way, they can tell the story of our lives. Our story of Christmas past and our story of Christmas present. The good and the not so good. But you know, here's what's interesting about ornaments though, is that they hang on the tree. Now, it's pretty obvious, but I, I think knowing that can help us with whatever we're dealing with this Christmas. You know, when I was your age, I remember spending a whole lot of time thinking about what was under the tree. Maybe you do too. But you know, it wasn't long before I learned that those things under the tree that I did want didn't really help me with the things that I didn't want. They might have helped me feel better for a bit, but only for a bit. They entertained me and distracted me only for so long before the, the thing that was bothering me, well, it came back to mind. And the funny thing is, is that I thought that they would make things better, but actually in some ways, I think they only made it worse because I realized that the presents, well, they didn't make the thing go away. There was no gift under the tree that ever brought our family back together. You see, I was looking for hope under the tree to help me with the ornaments on the tree, but I didn't find any hope there because these things here, well, they are beneath being able to deal with what's on the tree. But what about what's on top of the tree? What about this ornament above? Well, on top of the Christmas tree, you often see a star or an angel, just like we have here. There were two things that were important parts of the Christmas story. And in the story, God used both of those things to point people to Jesus. So when we see them, they are to remind us of Jesus. They remind us that Jesus is above the ornaments below. That whatever is hanging on that tree, that he sees them all. And he knows about all of them and he's above all of them. And they are not beyond his sight and they are not beyond his reach and they are not beyond his power. They are all under him. What that means is this, that when it comes to the things of our lives hanging on our tree, Christmas is about the hope found on top of the tree, not about the hope we often look for under the tree. Christmas is about the hope found on top of the tree, not about the hope we often look for under the tree. So what if with the hard things hanging on your tree this Christmas, what if we spent our time looking up instead of down? 
What if we fixed our eyes on what came wrapped in a swaddling cloth instead of what came wrapped in paper? What if we fixed our eyes on top of the tree instead of under it? You know those hard things that I shared? Well, they are part of my Christmas story. But just so you know, because of Jesus, those things have shaped my story, but they haven't defined my story. They've shaped who I am, but they haven't defined who I am. And allowing Jesus to define who I am, he has allowed me to redeem some of those unwanted gifts for something healing and something good. When I fixed my eyes on Jesus, Jesus got bigger and my problems got smaller. And better yet, I was actually able to truly enjoy the presence under the tree that I did get and not expect them to do something for me they never could. So the question to you is this. So when it comes to the hard things hanging on your tree, what if you did like I did and fix your eyes on top of the tree instead of under it? As Jesus got bigger, could your problems get smaller too? Could you find some healing and find some good? Could the things that, that have happened to you just shape you but not define you? Could you be able to truly enjoy the presence under the tree and not expect them to do something for you they never could? I'm not sure what you're asking for this Christmas, but that just might be the best thing you could get this Christmas. Here's an invitation and challenge for you. Everyone will get an ornament tonight. And what I invite and challenge you to do is this. Whatever that thing is that you're dealing with, that thing that you've gotten that you wish you could return, I'd like you to write it on the ornament. And then, like any other ornament, I'd like you to hang it on the Christmas tree that is set up for you. And as it hangs above the presents, I want you to remind yourself that the thing that you're dealing with is more important to you and to Jesus than what's under the tree. That this is not more important than this. And as that hangs below Jesus, that thing that you're dealing with, well, it's not above him. It's within his sight and it's not beyond his reach. It will help you put your struggle in the right place under the authority of Jesus, under the power of Jesus, and under the love of Jesus. And let it be your prayer of surrender to let him shine his light on your life and bring you the help and the hope that you're looking for. And later on, when you look at that ornament, you'll think back to this moment and you say, oh yes, yes, that was the year, that was the year, that was the year that Christmas truly became Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.